Coming up on today's Philadelphia Eagles now, the NFL trade deadline is going to be here before we know it. It's really around the corner. And I'll tell you what, this NFL season is flying by. This NFL calendar is flying by. So on the docket for today, five marquee players that Howie Roseman could look to trade for. Today's show is sponsored by Manscaped. There are 9 million men worldwide who have purchased the best men's grooming products from Manscaped. Hop on board that momentous train and in the process, get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com slash chat. Jalen Hurts can drop back and drop a dime to Alameda Zacchaeus for a touchdown. Take care of your dimes below your belt with Manscaped today. So the thought process behind this segment is this. Philadelphia is in a really good spot at 3-0 going into week four against Washington. It's too early to see which teams are contenders or not for some organizations across the NFL. But through three games, we do have a pretty good idea that there are some teams that clearly are not good and they will sell, making some of their players available, especially some players who are in the final years of their deals that those teams, respectively, are not going to bring back and they want to find a way to get some value for them. Now, the note here is that the Eagles, as of this recording, without any contract restructures, without any moves made, as we record this show live on Eagles Now on Wednesday, they have $5.7 million in cap space. Here's the deal about Howie Roseman, though. Wheeling and dealing. If Howie Roseman, going into the NFL trade deadline, thinks that there is one way or multiple ways that he can improve this team, and he thinks that that move could help the Eagles get better, push them over the top so that they can continue to compete for a Super Bowl championship, he's going to make a deal. He signed Indomitian and Sue and Linval Joseph in the same week last year. He traded for Robert Quinn. He's traded for Jay Ajayi. He's made moves multiple seasons approaching the deadline to improve his squad. So let's talk about these star players who could be available. And let's begin with Brian Burns. Brian Burns is in the final year of his contract with the Carolina Panthers. Since getting drafted out of Florida State by Carolina, he's turned himself into one of the best edge rushers in the National Football League. I know that Hassan Reddick and Nolan Smith, Brandon Graham, Josh Sweat, Derek Barnett, they offer you some really, really good talent at edge and defensive end. But Brian Burns is a really special player. And if he's out there and available, got to find a way to get him snaps, right? And if he's a part of this team for the long haul, if you re-sign him, you're just looking at a more dominant team here for Philadelphia that can continue to get after the quarterback. Now, do I think this is likely? No. Would I make this move from Philadelphia? Probably not, unless an injury happened to Reddick or one of those other players. But look at the sack production for Brian Burns the last four years going into this year. Seven and a half. 9, 9, 12 and a half. Those are the numbers in his first four years. And here in 2023, looking for a contract in which he kind of had a hold in with Carolina through three games, three sacks, four quarterback hits to go along with eight pressures. I'm curious to see if Carolina is going to move him. They're clearly not a good team. Bryce Young, it's going to take him a while to get up to speed. They don't have a lot of great weapons on the offensive side of the ball. And do they have plans for Burns to be a long-term member of this organization? If not, you could get a nice little package back for Brian Burns. In addition to the Eagles having a little bit of cap space left, they also have a lot of draft capital that they can include in some of these trades. What Burns give you gives you, just an elite edge rusher. A very good elite edge rusher who can play in a 4-3 scheme, 3-4 scheme. If you want to go five guys up front like Philadelphia has done before with Sean Desai, Jonathan Gannon, he could do that as well. Before we take a look at four more players, make sure you subscribe to the show because whenever the Eagles make a move, we talk about it. Big or small moves, we have you covered because we cover all of our bases here on Eagles now. And can we get the 54,000 subscribers prior to the game on Sunday? We're 506 people away. Fly, Eagles, fly, go, birds, let's get it. Marquee player number two, Buda Baker. Yes, he did kind of redo his contract a little bit prior to the season. And yes, Arizona has been one of the surprise teams so far. Right now, he's currently on IR. Arizona's defense playing pretty well without him. When he's on the field, though, a Swiss Army knife, a chess piece who you could use really at all three levels of the field. Reed Blankenship, I love the player. I think that he's going to be a stud for this team, and he's very affordable. But 
the opposite safety spot, a little bit of a concern. I think Sidney Brown, long term, going to be a really good player. But is he Buda Baker? No, he's not Buda Baker, who's been getting it done ever since he came into the league. And when I talk about the versatility of Buda Baker, check out his snap alignment from 2022 because he's been injured this year on IR, as I said. Free safety, 413 snaps. In the box, 349 snaps. In the slot, 148 and 41 snaps along the defensive line as a blitzer. So with Buda, it kind of serves Philadelphia well. Because you need another safety opposite of Reed Blankenship. You lost Avante Maddox, forcing James Bradbury to play slot. Josh Job on the outside. We saw Sidney Brown getting some slot reps Monday night against the Buccaneers. Can you imagine if that's Buda Baker getting some of those snaps? And he could be a key cog for this team for the foreseeable future. Another splash trade would be Patrick Sertan II. One of the top young cornerbacks in the National Football League. Darius Slay has even said on his podcast that he thinks that Sertan is the best cornerback in the game. Same draft class as Devontae Smith. And remember when the Eagles went into Denver back in 2021, first year under Nick Sirianni and got a big win at the time. You had Devontae Smith matched up against Sertan and he won that matchup oftentimes. 36 games played, 128 tackles so far for his career. Three tackles for loss, 27 pass breakups heading into this year. Six interceptions. And you look at his coverage stats as well, allowing a completion percentage of sub 59% when he's targeted, 1,100 yards. He's given up eight touchdowns and a quarterback rating of 79.7. What Sertan gives you, one of the elite quarterbacks in the game. And that would probably signal that you try to move on from Avante Maddox after this year who's due an average of $7.5 million through 2024. Then you go Slay on the outside, Sertan on the outside. Then you have Bradbury as your slot nickel corner. That's pretty damn good, and that's secondary for the Eagles. So what say you? What is the biggest area of need on this Eagles roster? I want you to get in the shoes of Howie Roseman. Put on Howie's glasses. Dissect this roster right now, and let me know down in the comment section. As I mentioned off the rip, today's show, sponsored by Manscaped. And right now, it is fresh ball fall. And there's only one solution to stay crisp, to stay fresh during fresh ball fall. That is Manscaped. You can get 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash chat, promo code chat. Their performance package 4.0 has you covered with everything. The Lawnmower 4.0 is a great razor. Interchangeable blades, a battery life that lasts a really long time. It is water resistant. There's a light so that you can get all the hairs that sometimes you won't be able to get with other razors. What I also like, safeguard technology. You never have to worry about cutting yourself up, whether you're shaving your George W. Bush or taking care of your chest hair, your beard with a different blade and guard, of course, or that back hair. What I also like about the Performance Package 4.0, the Crop Preserver, the Ball Deodorant, the nose hair trimmer is really valuable because have you ever had a conversation with somebody and you're like, I just kind of want to get that nostril hair out of there. Yeah, it's a little bit distracting. Take care of it all. Manscaped.com slash chat. Promo code chat for 20% off and free shipping. Marquee trade target number five. Jerry Judy, another player with the Denver Broncos. Look, it's not a good look in the Mile High City right now. The Miami Dolphins were toying with Sean Payton, Russell Wilson, and the crew. Broncos country, let's ride. Yeah, they weren't riding high in Miami in week three. A 70-burger by Miami. And the Broncos are going to be playing the Chicago Bears this week in a battle of two teams that are awful. And it might be a battle of two teams looking for the number one overall pick. And if the Broncos continue to struggle, could they sell the farm? And could a guy like Judy, could a guy like Sertan be on the trade block? Getting some nice pieces back for a rebuilding team? Not a bad idea. In 2022, Jerry Judy, definitely his best year of his NFL career. 100 targets, 67 catches, 972 yards, 6 touchdowns. The year before that, 56 grabs, 467. And then in 2020, 113 targets. So he's been targeted a lot. It hasn't resulted in a lot of catches, but... Rookie season, 856 yards and three touchdowns. And then in weeks 13 through 18 last year, with subpar quarterback play, because Russ, who used to cook, might be cooked 
45 targets, 37 grabs, 523 yards, and three touchdowns. He's a pretty solid player, and his pro-rated stats in 2022, not bad at all. Now, I'm not sure that he's a number one outside wide receiver. You have two of those already in A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. And I like what Zacchaeus can bring. I like the speed element of Quez Watkins, even though he continues to really disappoint me. They ain't Jerry Judy as far as Zacchaeus and uh, Quez Watkins. Like this guy out of the slot, getting vertical, taking the top off of the defense. Maybe that could unlock Dallas Goddard a little bit more. That's pretty awesome. And that's exactly what he gives you, a speed threat nonetheless. Feel free to interact with me on social media. I'm on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Chase underscore senior. I'm on Instagram, at Chase underscore senior. Hit me up. Say what's up. Look forward to hearing from you. Trade target number five, Mike Evans, wide receiver for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, Mike Evans, also in the final year of his contract, he set a deadline with Tampa Bay to get a contract done. They didn't get a contract done. So he could go elsewhere in his NFL career after this year. And if the Buccaneers continue to struggle, you could look at a player that's fine, like Mike Evans, um, and he could be a very good rental for you, and the Buccaneers might be able to get some value back for a player who might walk in free agency nonetheless. Obviously, some of these more realistic than others, but we're having some fun on the show, giving you some great analysis here on Eagles. Now, if you have faith in Howie Roseman to do whatever he has to do to make this team good, how he do that? Type HR, his initials down in the chat right now.